Okay, so a quick intro. Uh, what is Etsy um, for the Minnesota Art Pottery Association uh, October meeting? And uh, let's get on with the talk. So what is Etsy? It's an e-commerce platform, and e-commerce is basically an industry term for a website that buys and sells product. So uh, eBay is e-commerce, Apple is e-commerce, Dell, Amazon. Basically, it's an online marketplace is what e-commerce is. And Etsy was founded primarily as a specialty website for handcraft, meaning living artists creating current work. And uh, that would include anything. As you could see, ceramics, painting, beading, jewelry, the list go anything you can make by hand. And um, Etsy requires that the artists represent themselves. There are no galleries on Etsy. In other words, they want the artist to set up their own shop and to engage their own customers. So it's an artist marketplace primarily and dominantly. But two or three years ago, they added in the vintage category. And that's what I think is going to affect us as buyers and sellers of pottery, both contemporary handcraft and uh, historical potteries. And in Etsy's term, by the way, the vintage category is anything over 20 years old. I know we like 80 to 100 year old stuff, but uh, they have to set a standard for buying and selling that doesn't compete with current artists. So if it's more than 20 years old, um, it pretty much keeps them out of interfering or competing with current artist work. Okay. Okay, Etsy, founded in 2005, and these are some recent figures I got off their website. And these are, these are store revenues, meaning this is not Etsy's revenue, it's the revenues of what people are buying and selling on the website. You can see they're making very rapid progression, 176 million three years ago, 306 million two years ago, and last year, 525 million in sales. Um, there's 800,000 stores on Etsy. That's both handcraft and vintage. There's 16 million items for sale there, and 2.6 million of those are vintage. Um, that's all I have in my store. I'm not an artist, uh, but there is a whole raft of uh, vintage dealers who are setting up shop on Etsy. 42 million unique visitors come to Etsy a month. That's not page views, that's 42 million human beings go to Etsy.com every month and go shopping. And they look at 1.4 billion web pages. And in 2012, recently, they surpassed the $500 million revenue goal or mark. And the busy season on Etsy is actually the holidays. So I don't know where it's going to end up, but it's going to be a huge year for Etsy. 2012 will be. OK, so let's, let's take a look at like an Etsy homepage. First of all, this is what you're greeted with when you show up at Etsy. It's very simple, very straightforward, very clean. Um, they, they do their own front page, but if you're going to be shopping on Etsy, you're going to be then visiting, going through these categories browsing or going through these categories searching. And I'll get into detail on that coming. But first I want to go to what we all know as the standard, which is eBay. So I want to visit eBay and kind of review what we know when we shop for historical pottery online. Um, so here's one example, and I used Roseville for all my examples. Here's somebody who went out and bought some Roseville cups, photographed them on, by the way, the cups on Car Seat Lady is not really her eBay name. I'm doing that to protect the, you know, to protect their identity. You got it? No. No. Yeah. So when you go to, when you, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm doing this quite deliberately because Roseville is not exactly a dumpy pottery, but anybody who finds Roseville can go to eBay and sell it. So you can go out to your car with your smartphone, put the cups on your car seat, and put it for sale. This is a group that has curated collections. I don't think eBay is necessarily a curated marketplace, and this is one example of that. And here's another example. I call this guy Roseville Ashtray Dude because he went out and found that Roseville basket on the left, the basket vase, and a piece of plastic on the right and listed it as a Roseville Ashtray. <laughs> it's honest to God's truth. And um, it, wa it wasn't until a couple of days later that somebody enlightened him that that piece of plastic actually had nothing to do with it. So this is the level of expertise of people who are put, many people who are putting up the potteries we collect on eBay. 
And here's another example of a very good eBay plot. Now this is, you know, we can count on all the hands and toes in this room, the number of people who are throwing up stuff on eBay, let's say by Roseville every week. But there's a few good sellers and we tend to know those sellers. And Potts in Atlantic City, New Jersey is one of those. In fact, they were at the Arts and Crafts show. Great inventory, trustworthy, uh, and uh, quality pots. So this is the exception, not the rule, of eBay pottery buying. And here's another eBay seller. I call this eBay seller paper on lawn. Because if you don't have a photo booth, and you don't necessarily pick up the dog droppings, it's easier to get three sheets of paper and put them on the ground to photograph your Roseville vase to put it for sale. So we have to approach this kind of seller and ask about things like repairs, cracks, flea bites, etc. And by the way, I'm pretty sure I didn't get any Minnesota sellers in my show. So I'm hoping, I mean, if, if you show up in my show, just we'll keep it between ourselves. So, uh, so this is the level of pottery we want to buy, but the level of presentation and, and expertise that we're often greeted with on eBay. Steve, that's better than when they photograph them on the banister or the deck. I have one coming. I love those shows. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, of course, Gordon is the exception to this rule. This next slide is a very popular category of Roseville seller. If they post their pictures sideways. These are three different auction listings of people who bought Roseville, took the picture, and didn't even rotate it before putting it on eBay. So I call those sideways folks. So again, this is the level of expertise of the people we're buying or shopping with. And here's a good seller, Just Art Pottery. Quality wares, trustworthy dealer, and again, the exception to the rule of eBay. And this last slide obviously is for Gordon. I'm calling this the retired in Florida seller, where the guy, see, he put his pot on the right side on top of cinder blocks, and because the lighting in here isn't exact, on this overhead isn't exactly strong, he didn't necessarily bother putting a shirt on. And what you, can, what you cannot see necessarily on the overhead is he does actually have shorts on, but they look like a diaper. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not kidding. So. So this is the guy, and this guy, this guy puts a lot of pot, I'm glad to say the weather has changed in the south and he's now wearing shirts in his photos. And he, by the way, he's also an expert in apparently um, beat up uh, Green Bay Packers jerseys. So this is a survey of the market that we know right now as an e-commerce site for historical art pottery. This is the standard. I call, I call, I regularly refer to eBay as a flea market with auctions. There's all levels of seller, and, um, but basically when you go through the historical pottery sections, it looks like a flea market. And, that's, and of course the flea market is the presentation and expertise, the auctions is some do buy it now, some do auctions. So I'm gonna return to Etsy and let's visit what I think is the new standard in online shopping. So we're back to the Etsy homepage. So I'm gonna skip ahead here and I'm gonna focus on the bottom two categories where the artists represent themselves and the vintage categories for resale of used goods, used collectible goods. These are the categories, all of the categories on Etsy. There are not 10,000 of them or however many there are. If you've ever tried to list on eBay, you know what I'm talking about. But these are the major categories on Etsy. You can see they're dominated by handcraft because that's the legacy of Etsy. But the two sections on the left and right with the asterisks are the two we're gonna focus on tonight. Ceramics and pottery, which is contemporary handcraft, like mimosas, and vintage on the right side. These are the two sections this group will be primarily shopping in. So I, went, I clicked on the ceramics and pottery link on Etsy, and I want to show you something rather startling. You see how many pieces are for sale? 140,000 pieces of pottery are for sale by artists who made and listed themselves. So if you're anyone, anywhere, and you know, quite a number of us in this room, and I know who you are, also buy work from living potters. And I'm looking at one right now, or two of them right now. This is where they, if, they're, if they don't want to set up their own website, and you, we all know artists, they are not exactly the most technically inclined. Etsy is that easy to set up that, I don't know what the number of uh, handcraft artists are, but 140,000 current listings of handcrafted pottery on Etsy. And of course, you can go into beading, 
and painting or whatever else you want to shop there. This is just the ceramic section. And then I went to the vintage section and I didn't drill down on pottery. There's actually not a pottery section. There's just this collectible section. But you can see there's 2.6 million items for sale in the vintage section on Etsy. It's, about, it's not quite 20% of all listed items. And this is where I do all of my buying and selling. Actually, I do buying of new work as well, but this is where I do buying and selling of vintage. So I'm one of the, actually I'm about 100 of those 2.6 million items. So I want to use as an example of vintage, again, back to Roseville. And I deliberately chose Roseville because I wanted a familiar example for the group. So you can see when I search for just Roseville in the vintage section, there's 825 items. So relatively speaking, it's not that many. Because on the next screen, and by the way, this is how Etsy presents every screen. It's in a grid of 24 images on the right side and categories on the left side. And every Etsy screen is this clean and, and almost every Etsy store is this well presented. So I, I went and took the same shot over at the eBay site, and you can see they have 4,900 Roseville items. And that gives you a sense of the relative scale of eBay as compared to Etsy. Much larger, many more buyers, many more sellers. But again, I'm going to hop back to the Etsy screen. Those of us who set up, set up shops on Etsy, we tend to have curated inventory. In other words, we can be, we're more likely to be experts and or trustworthy in what we're carrying. So this is just a snapshot I took of eBay a couple of days ago. And again, and you know, I did not rig this folks uh, seriously, but there's the guy with his shirt on. Two weeks ago, he had his shirt off in the other photo. This is him standing in front of his web camera. So do you want to buy your monumental Roseville face from the guy who only has a webcam? Well, I'd, I'm personally not comfortable doing that. I'm personally comfortable buying it from fellow collectors. So, so let's get into selling on Etsy. That was sort of visiting the major categories of buying. And I'm sorry, folks, I have to go back to eBay and I have to visit the standard that we all know of selling. So if you want to list an item on eBay, this is what's involved. This screen of picking categories this screen of additional details, and this one, and this one, and this one, and one more, and that one. It takes seven slides to show you what's involved in putting one item on eBay. So it's a very complex environment, and I don't really know how eBay grew into this sort of spaghetti mess, but it's not a very seller-friendly environment. It's easy to shop there, but to sell, it's a pain in the butt. Etsy recently introduced what they call the simple form. And I know where they got the idea from, and that's my next slide. But you can now go to a simple form on eBay and list your item in just three pages instead of seven. So let's look at selling on Etsy. This is screen one of three on Etsy. Very minimal information required. You, they want some basic category information in the top area here. They, you're allowed to post five photos, and they host them, and there is no charge. Only five photos. No fewer, no more. Uh, a simple item title and a simple item description. And by the way, you can put as much inf info as you, want, as you want. But on eBay, you know, every seller has a different formatted page. On Etsy, every seller has the same formatted page. So the shopping experience is consistent. So this is, the, this is the first form for listing a, an item for sale on Etsy. The second form, the shop section is your shop sections. You get 10 of them. You can choose if you want to define categories of what your buyer might be like. What's the occasion, a wedding, whatever, anniversary, et cetera. And Etsy has very specific management of tags. And I, I'm speaking specifically to the eBay sellers in the room tonight. eBay is notorious for what I call um, tag spamming, which is a listing is full of dozens if not hundreds of words to get their item to show up in the search, even if it's on an unrelated item. Etsy, on the other hand, allows you to have terms that are searchable in only three areas, the title, the tag section, which is where you can gratuitously tag it, like let's say Roseville, Futura, Vase, bum, 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 
And then the material section, ceramic, glaze, etc. So Etsy controls uh, uh, what I call tag spamming by limiting the number of tags. And trust me, it's hard to get up to 13 tags when you're meaningfully describing the item you're selling. And finally, the last page, very simple. What do you want for it? This is not an auction site. What is your price? How many are do you have to sell? Uh, and then you get to save your shipping profiles. You know, you might say, generally I like to ship ceramics for about $10, art for $20, etc. and how long it takes to ship your items. That is the full extent of an Etsy listing. It's this simple. That's all three pages. Do so you under description, is it strictly typing or do they do HTML? Strictly typing. Every Etsy listing beneath the photo has words. And those words are for you to describe your piece. There is no bolding, underlining. There's no 88-point font. There's no red. There's no green. There's no embedded images. In other words, when you go store to store on Etsy, you have a consistent interface. You know, I love it, quite frankly, because I love it as a seller because it's easy, and I love it as a buyer because it's consistent. Is it one picture for the item? Five pictures. Five pictures. Right there, one to five. And there's no charge for, you know, eBay gets in this whole game of listing fees. Do you want your item bolded? Do you want your pictures to be in the gallery? Blah, blah, blah. No, there's five pictures on each listing. That's how it is. So take the best five. We all know how to take good pottery photos. And that's how you'll represent your item. What I'm telling you basically is consistency matters for the shopping experience and Etsy has um, strict and welcome guidelines on that. So another thing about Etsy is it's not like sections where you post things to a wall. Like if you go to Roseville on eBay, you throw one item up amongst the other 4,500. On Etsy, everything is store-centric. My earlier slide indicated that Etsy has 800,000 stores. That's 800,000 artists or vintage dealers that created a store in which to sell their item. And this is some of what you get to, and, and, this, and this is important as well for the seller and for the buyer getting to know the seller is how the seller defines themselves. So I'm gonna go through this a little bit. Every seller store gets 10 sections. You define those sections. And obviously I am pottery and dinnerware sent, this is my store by the way, Prairie Decorative Arts. You'll see it show up in a couple examples tonight. But you get to define only 10 sections your store gets to have a logo banner. Your store gets to have a short description of what you are. And your store gets to have a featured section at the top. And every page has 24 photos for 24 listings. And then you have multiple pages as you, have, as you exceed that number. Um, every store has a seller, which I'll get to in the next screen. In other words, you're not just an eBay ID, you're a person. And they can see at a glance, for example, your feedback. And I'm going to go and I'm going to scroll further down this page on the Etsy store. And you'll see along the left edge, this is the rest of the Etsy store. Who is the shop owner? What's their feedback? How long have they been in business? How many sales have they had? How many people have favorited their store, which we, they call admirers? Um, so this is, this is the entry page to every Etsy store. There is no listing wall like eBay. You go store to store and shop. You can search for items in individual stores, but you visit a store when you shop. Every store is a store owner. As you saw on the left side of my page, I was the owner of my store. This is Allison and Kevin. They're the owners of a store called Bit of Butter, where they sell post-war modern. So when you click on the seller name, uh, and let me scroll down, let me go back a screen. When you click on the seller name, the shop owner on the left side, you go to details about that shop owner. Who are they? So they get a brief description of who is a shop seller? What do they put in their store? What are treasuries that have been created on Etsy? I'll get into that. That include their items. What do they like? In other words, what stores have they visited and favorited? What teams of buyers and sellers do they participate in on Etsy? Again, this is Etsy relating to the buyer that these are real people making these listings and, and, the, and, the, and the seller relating to the buyer 
their specific interests and uh, offerings. And I'm going to scroll down the page, and there's, additional, there's this additional section right here. Who are their favorite shops? So if you go to a shop like Bit of Butter, and you like what they have, you can see what do they like. What are their favorite items in other shops, and what other shops do they like? So Etsy has a whole social layering system, which I'll also get into a bit later, which allows you to uh, interconnect buyers and sellers, stores to stores, items to stores, stores to items, et cetera, or people to each other. So let's get into the next slide. This is the selling on Etsy. This is, again, how simple it is. Selling fees. Again, I have to visit eBay because I know perhaps half of you on in the room may be selling on eBay, and I want to discuss the fees on Etsy versus eBay. To do a listing on eBay, 50 cents, and I know they play around with that fee, higher or lower, but generally that's what the fee is. Etsy, it's 20 cents, meaning every item you put on there, the posting itself is 20 cents. How long is that posting good for? On eBay, generally your item is up for three to 30 days. You have to choose that at the time of listing. Every Etsy listing is good for four months. So 20 cents to put your basically individual item up for four months. When the item sells, what is the credit card fee? eBay forces you to use PayPal. Etsy takes PayPal and allows the shopper to use their own credit card. In other words, if somebody comes to Etsy, loves what you have, they do not have to then go leave and create a PayPal account. Right on the spot, they can be taken to a checkout page where they just enter their credit card number, just like any other e-commerce website. And you know, eBay owns PayPal. They're going to collect money from you when they list it, they're going to collect money from you when they sell it, and they're going to collect money from you through PayPal when you check out with a credit card. Etsy will take PayPal or straight up credit cards. And I can tell you as a seller, at least two thirds of my buyers, two thirds use a credit card, not PayPal. They just make a purchase. No different than if you're at an antique mall or if you're at a arts and crafts fair as we were a few weeks ago. So back to the screen on selling fees. So eBay drives you into PayPal, Etsy will do PayPal or just straight up credit card. And finally, and this is perhaps the most eye-popping selling fee comparison, eBay takes 9% of your final value. Etsy takes 3.5%. Um, I have maintained, and, and those of us who have experience selling on eBay know, they can fee you to death. Um, on Etsy, 20 cents to get your item up, 3.5% when you sell it, and 3% on checkout with a credit card. So if you look at the aggregate of what eBay's fees are and what Etsy's fees are, they're almost 2 to 1. You're going to be in the 12 to 13 percent range on eBay, and you're going to be in the six and a half percent range on Etsy. So it costs half as much to sell your product on Etsy. So I, I'm on Twitter. That's how Brooke found me a year ago. And I sent a tweet out to my friends early on in developing this talk. I said simply, why are you on Etsy? I did not tell them I was even doing a talk. I just said, why are you on Etsy? And my friends tweeted back. They like the Etsy brand. This is Chelsea in Mississippi. She likes the visually appealing design and she likes the community of buyers and sellers. Beatriz in LA likes the community, the aesthetic of Etsy and the user-friendly interface. I'm again talking to the sellers in the audience tonight. Next slide. There we go, Brian also in LA. He likes the community he likes the presentation, and he feels like me. <laughs> Anything but eBay is good, because eBay is a pain in the butt to sell on. OK, let's go on to the next one. Eliza, also on the West Coast. She likes the visual appeal of Etsy, the nice people as both buyers and sellers. She likes that a listing is four months long. She likes having a shop versus just throwing her items on an eBay wall. She likes their easy interface and the fact that they cost almost half as much as eBay. Another seller, also on the West Coast. Everything Eliza said, who is Eliza Dipper, plus she really likes the system of the simplicity of Etsy in general. Scott, who is actually a St. Louis Park native, lives in Kansas now. He's, he likes the strong community of buyers and sellers on Etsy, the low cost, the decent traffic. Again, 
eBay is much larger than Etsy, so the traffic is good, but not as voluminous as eBay. Good search engine optimization. And for those of you who have developed websites, I don't expect it's met most, that means when you post an item on Etsy or eBay and somebody goes to Google or Bing or Yahoo and searches, where does your item show up? I can tell you, honest to God, my Etsy sales are on the first page of Google searches consistently every time. All I do is I follow Etsy's uh, title and tag requirements. And if somebody says, I'm looking for a Roseville Futura vase, I'm going to show up on Google's first page ahead of eBay. So the search engine optimization of Etsy is stellar. So if somebody goes searching randomly, not, not at eBay, not at Etsy, they just go to Google and say, you know, I want a Roseville whatever, and your item is on Etsy, it's going to pop way high in the list. And, there's, and as Scott says, there's no, and Scott is, by the way, a web developer, there is no platform for selling vintage online that is comparable to Etsy, again, in terms of ease of use, cost, aesthetics, et cetera. Back to Eliza. When she goes, when she, after working on Etsy for a while and goes back to eBay, she says it makes her salty. Now, in the Twitter world, that basically means grumpy. So visiting eBay makes you grumpy when, after you've been on Etsy long enough. And she says, if I'm going to have a hobby, and by the way, all of my friends have day jobs, and they almost all have Etsy stores. So this is strictly a hobby. If I'm going to have a hobby, I want to have fun with it. And Etsy is very fun both to sell and to shop. Siobhan in Chicago, she likes the fees. Again, the high search results on Google, the easy setup and checkout, and the ability to connect with others. It, you'll see, compared to eBay, it's not even close. Back to Scott, who I then told, oh, by the way, all of your comments are going into a talk. Is that OK? And they all wrote back, yes, it's OK. They did not know that their talks would be on the screen tonight. Scott said, oh, well, if you're doing a talk, I would mention also that there's a huge benefit of having a permanent online presence, like a store, that you can brand. So people will get to know your store based on your name, your store name, your logo, your consistent inventory. These are the things Etsy allows you to develop. And finally, Brian, again, the one who hates eBay, says, me and you, we're the eBay naysayers. So Etsy was a decent alternative to it, but I also like to diversify. And I'm going to talk about diversifying where you list later on. But he does some listing on eBay and most listing on Etsy. So that is why you're on Etsy. And to get to a point that Brooke made earlier, Door Pottery posted their new pots a day or two ago to eBay, I'm sorry, to Facebook. And I said, by the way, I'm giving a talk on Etsy tomorrow to MAPA, and I'm including your shop as an example. And they said, thanks, Steve. Etsy has kept us in business. That gives me an idea of how important Etsy is to many handcraft potters. So if you're in the handcraft marketplace, this is a great place to go shopping for handcrafted pots. So who's on, who is on Etsy besides, obviously, Door, who I just showed you? Well, I am. I've been, I've been on Etsy for two years, and I've been selling rather extensively for probably the past 15 to 18 months, meaning loading up heavy inventory. I generally keep my inventory around 100 items. And this is a sample of what a listing of mine looks like. So when you click on one of those thumbnails and you drill down on a listing, this is how simple an Etsy listing looks. The photo, the five of them you can browse, whether or not you want to add it to your shopping cart, and the shopping cart can come from multiple stores, by the way. You could shop through Etsy and buy from multiple stores. You know, who am I? So when you drill down on an item, it's this clean, this consistent, and uh, this clean and consistent for the shopper. Who else is on there? Many of us who went to the Arts and Crafts Fair a few weeks ago saw this local graphic designer and artist, Cindy Lindgren, has her store on there. She does arts and crafts style cards, posters, etc. So Cindy sells her stuff online on Etsy. There's no Cindy Lindgren website, per se, for e-commerce. She chooses to sell her stuff here. And the interesting thing is that I never heard of Cindy Lindgren before. But when I went shopping on, for handcraft in Minneapolis, I found her and found out she lives in South Minneapolis, as do I, as do many of us. So here was one of the kind of the great national 
designers of contemporary printed uh, arts and crafts style material right here in South Minneapolis using Etsy. And here's an example of one of her listings. The great thing about Cindy's work is she does local illustrations. So you can see Minnehaha Falls, the, the um, what is it called, the trolley, uh, Lake Harriet, etc. So this is Cindy's store. Who else is on there? Guillermo Cuellar, who spoke with, to us about six months ago. And the reason we're talking tonight is because of Guillermo about Etsy. Somebody asked him from the audience, how do I find your stuff? He says, oh, I have an Etsy store. And I went to Brooke after the meeting and said, we need to talk about Etsy because this is an important marketplace for pottery buyers and sellers. So this is where Guillermo chooses to sell his handcraft. And when you click on one of Guillermo's listings, this is what it looks like. Again, you can see the consistency of the interface. Even though I'm selling vintage, Cindy, uh, Cindy is selling uh, print, uh, graphic design and Guillermo is selling handcraft. Who else is on Etsy? Door Pottery. Here's an example. And Door Pottery this week just put their experimental pieces on Etsy. In other words, if you're big on experimentals, meaning one of a kind pieces out of either Ephraim or Door, this is where Door posts them. This is how you get them. You don't have to drive to Madison to go pick up an experimental pot. So this is an example of such. They call it product development. So while they're dabbling with different designs, they'll stick them up on Etsy, and that's where you can find them. So if you want to see what either is their current inventory or what there is their experimental inventory, this is where Door Pottery does it. Who else is on there? Another Minneapolis artist named Nick DeVries. And Nick does the local uh, street fairs. And I never met Nick until this year, but I always used to go to his shop and shop it. Because Nick's parents were antique dealers. And so Nick tends to develop in the arts, his pottery in the arts and crafts style with Japanese influence. Again, I think he's a good, very good contemporary potter who uses Etsy as his outlet, and his aesthetic fits this group. And here's an example of some of his work for sale. A couple of cruets and then a coffee cup. Okay, and then, so that's the selling and that's the buying of Etsy. Now, what it makes Etsy different from, honestly, any other marketplace online is it's an incredibly social environment. First of all, every account on Etsy can click on a, any listing on Etsy and say, this is a favorite of mine, and Etsy will track that. And that, those favorites can be private or public. Most of us leave it public because if somebody comes to my page and sees what I like, they may then like my store or they may see that I like the same ceramic jar they do and may come to my store and shop. So favorites is how buyers and sellers connect with each other through common likes. Circles. You can put a, any seller or any other buyer on Etsy in your circle, meaning if you see what they're selling, or you see what they favorite, they can be in your circle. So I've, been, I've probably favorited 500 items on Etsy in the past couple of years. People see that I favorited it, and then they like what I favorite because they look at the rest of my favorites. So they put me in their circle. And what that means is that when I return to Etsy and continue favoriting things, my favorites show up in their activity feed. Meaning you can come to Etsy every day, and I do it every night at about 10 o'clock, and I go to the activity feed because people in my circle, meaning the 60 people I want to track, the stuff they've been favoriting throughout the day shows up in an activity feed. So what do my friends and fellow shoppers like shows up here. And I have bought things off the activity feed, meaning another friend discovers it, I love it, I buy it. And that's how it works. It's a very social environment. So they could favor it. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah. That's you can. <laughs> no. The, 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 it's a very social environment. We, when we click something, we expect our friends to see it. Meaning, I will click on an item if I know five of my friends will love it, even if I don't. Because to, at that night, when they go back to Etsy, they're going to see it in their feed. So this is a place where we share things. And favoriting is a sharing mechanism. And there is a way to hide your favorites on Etsy. So if you're doing favorites only for your shopping purposes, they can be private. 
But most of us leave it public because it's a, it's a very sharing environment. I don't know if I want to know what I want to Yeah. You can, you can hide it, trust me. Uh, and conversations. Sellers to buyers, buyers to sellers, sellers to sellers, buyers to buyers. We talk all the time. I have made 235 sales on Etsy and I have had 500 conversations. Because sellers talk to other sellers about their store. Hey, I like your store. Oh, you might have a listing mistake or a typo. We help each other. And we're total strangers, but we help each other. Sellers will talk to buyers. Can you give me additional details on the item? Are, are, do you know, are, is this a particularly good example of Rookwood or Roseville or whatever? So we are talking to each other constantly. Again, I have twice as many conversations as actual transactions on Etsy. So this is, a, you know, it's funny. Brooke and I had dinner after the Arts and Crafts Fair on Saturday night with a number of uh, dealers from the show. And the gentleman, I, John is his name, who sells frames, says, I sell frames on eBay because I like that there's a, you know, you kind of get the notice to ship it and you stick it in a box and there's no discussion. On Etsy, we're talking to each other all the time. Hey, I like your store. Will you have other sizes available? And John was like, you know what? I kind of like the anonymous or cold nature of eBay. It's a very cold environment. If you like going to arts and crafts fairs and meeting other dealers, if you like coming to Pottery Club and meeting other collectors, then Etsy is a social environment. eBay is very, I'll say, sterile and disconnected. The buyers and sellers are. Of course, I told him that the Etsy fees were about half of eBay's and he perked up. I don't know if he has any Etsy store yet. And another thing Etsy has, let me get to the next slide, are teams. And teams are buyers and sellers of a common interest and a team can be created for any topic in the world. There could be a Minnesota buyer and seller team. There could be an art buyer and seller team. There could be a pottery makers team that's not for pottery seller. I'm sorry, that's not for pottery buyers. Like to share tips on how to sell handcraft. There's vintage lovers, people who specifically operate on Etsy in the vintage world. And there's thousands of these teams and anyone can create a team on Etsy. And and you can have it be a closed group, or you can have it be an open group. But this is how we not only help each other, buyer to seller, seller to buyer, buyer to buyer, but we, um, we also help each other in teams. So obviously after showing you all this, Etsy is the only place to do business. Death to eBay, right? Charlie, yeah, death to eBay? Okay, well, not so fast. When you are buying and selling, you need to pick the outlet that is most appropriate for what you need. And that's true of any environment. I've described for you the strengths and weaknesses of both eBay and Etsy tonight. So obviously I'm a huge Etsy person because as you might know from me being in Pottery Club, I'm a huge social person. Um, I welcome those conversations. I welcome making new friendships. But that's not necessarily for everyone. So pick the outlet most appropriate for your buying and your selling style. If your buying style is you like flea markets, you like auctions, you like buying from total strangers, <laughs> and you know what I'm talking about. If you like buying from people who are generalists, meaning the guy who sells the Packers jersey is also the Roseville dealer. If you like shopping in the biggest marketplace on the planet, then obviously you're an eBay buyer, okay? If you like shopping at antique malls and pottery shows, if you like items that are offered at a fixed price, if you like having relationships with other buyers and sellers, if you like buying directly from an artist who has handcrafted the piece, or if you like buying from dealers who have curated inventory, like most people in this room would, if you had to sell items out of your, in, your collection, they would be consistent. Your store would be consistent because it's about you. It's about your style then you're an, Etsy buyer. you're an Etsy buyer and you're an Etsy seller. This is very much the environment I'm very comfortable in. If you are a seller and you like the anonymity of eBay, if you like to sell things to the highest bidder, you like the auction format. If you're a generalist, because you have to sell 50 different categories of items, and if you need to sell in the largest marketplace, you're clearly an eBay seller. If you like selling at antique malls and pottery shows where we have fixed prices, 
If you like branding yourself, like people at the Arts and Press Fair do, if you like fixed prices on your offerings, if you like having relationships with buyers, and if you have curated inventory, you are an Etsy seller. Okay. So what I want, and this is why tonight's talk was very different than past MAPA talks, is that we're talking about a marketplace, not talking about a pottery. eBay has been running the online marketplace pretty much without competition since the mid-90s. I'm telling you, Etsy is making gigantic inroads from people like myself who need a more social environment, a more curated environment, a more consistent environment, and a more simple environment. So if you go online to buy, I'm going to implore you. I'm, I'm telling you, buy where you want. But if you're going to buy handcraft, please go to Etsy. Because this is where the artists are representing themselves. Go to Etsy, click on categories, and ceramics and pottery. Mind you, the vintage categories for historical potteries. But if you go to the categories on the front page of Etsy and click on this, you are looking at the pottery stores by the potters themselves. Again, 140,000 pieces of pottery for sale right now in the Handcraft Pottery Store on Etsy. So you can just search for green pottery, right? Absolutely. Yeah, right. Yes. Yes. So the key to buying and selling online and vintage is different than Handcraft. You need to find a balance. We talked about the merits of both eBay and Etsy. And I, by the way, also sell on eBay. If I have an item that I think is going to go particularly high at auction, I'll throw it on eBay. If I have an item that I think will look horrible in my curated store, I'll throw it on eBay. In other words, I use eBay like an auction site in a flea market. But most of what I sell is my personal collection, and it's curated, and I sell it on Etsy. And that's it.